Hello and welcome. Uh, today's video is going to be about the Mini MOSD and how to upgrade it through uh, telemetry or how to change the display settings at least. One of my subscribers had got me to help him on Skype because he just wanted velocity and the battery on his thing. And uh, he had a cable like this, a serial to USB adapter, but for some reason it just kept on uh, messing up. It might have been a 3 volt version or something. Besides that, he just couldn't get this thing to work. So I had to come up with a quick way and I found just the right settings to use telemetry. So um, if you do have the USB to TTL cable like this and you just want to jump to the part of the video because you're curious about how to change these settings anyways, I'll put a time link to using the config OSD and how pretty easy it is to use or whatever. Um, I wouldn't really suggest using the telemetry. If you have the time and patience, you can just order yourself a micro USD or whatever, or I mean a USB to serial adapter. But um, if you don't have the patience like most of us or whatever, you don't have the patience to wait the three weeks or whatever it is, um, I'm going to show you guys how to use the telemetry instead. It's actually really straightforward and it's just two wires you have to cut and you don't really have to solder if you don't want to, but I'll jump into this now. First steps here is hooking up the telemetry back up to your APM or as long as you have um, however you have your air unit attached to the positive and negative that's really what you're after here I'm just using this for the power basically and then here's the ground unit so I'm gonna plug this guy in to my computer and plug in the APM you should get a green dot and then some blinking orange if everything's right but I'm not gonna get into that part so extract my package and uh, I might have more files than this. I'll first show you the 3D uh, config. So if you don't have Mission Planner, you can use this program or you can just use this program. You don't have to use Mission Planner if you don't want to. So open this guy. Change the COM port to whatever one was detected. I believe mine's COM3. And then make sure the baud rate's at 57600. And then you're going to click load settings. All right, so it's really important here that both sides actually, you see both sides here. If you only see the one side, Something's wrong with your air unit side. So just make sure um, you figure that out first before you uh, proceed. So the things uh, you're gonna wanna also maybe print screen or just use my video for the settings here. They should be the same as mine. You might have a different TX power though. But you can either write these settings down or just take a picture of it or whatever, or just use mine as a reference. All right, so this is, these are the things you're gonna have to change. The 64 airspeed, change it to 192, and then go to this side and change it to 192. You can use copy required items to the remote side, but just make sure you get exactly the same on both sides. Uh, ECC, uncheck that, uncheck that one. Mavlink, change it to raw data, change this guy to raw data. And then op reset, uncheck that, uncheck that. And then just again look quickly over it, making sure it's the same. After it is, click Save Settings. So in Mission Planner, you'll probably get errors. So I'll just show after I'm done this, I'll show the Mission Planner way. So this just takes a couple of seconds here. Right, so what I usually just to do to confirm it actually worked is um, uncheck or put a check mark back on that one and then this side here. Don't click save settings, click on load settings again. And this is just going to re download what we just updated the uh, air unit with and stuff. These two check marks should disappear and that just confirms that it actually got written.
All right, so those two check marks did disappear. So that's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna show you the mission planner. So open up mission planner. Here, change the COM port to the one it got detected and make sure the baud rate at 57600. Don't push connect. Go to initial setup, optional hardware, click radio, and then click load settings. And it looks just like the other 3DR program. Except this one usually gives errors. But I'll show you that it still works even with the errors. All right, again, confirm both sides are there. If not, don't proceed. So change the airspeed to 192. Change this side, 192. Change, uncheck ECC, uncheck it. Mavlink, raw data, raw data. Uncheck the ops resend and uncheck that guy. And then click save settings. And if I don't, yeah, okay, I did get the error. So if you do get these errors here, just push OK. And just watch this guy, it'll say done when it's finished. And it's done. So it looked like it wrote, so we're just gonna do the same test again. I'm gonna put a check mark there, put a check mark there. I'm gonna click load settings. Try it again. All right, so those check marks disappeared, so everything worked out perfect. So now we can close down Mission Planner. And then we'll show you how to uh, do the wiring on this guy now. So the way to connect this guy up to your Mini M OSD, what I'm gonna be doing is using the power from uh, the telemetry here. You can grab five volts somewhere else, whichever way your setup is already is. Uh, these two wires here for the TX and the RX, you have to cut them. So cut those two guys like that. And then uh, I always order a bunch of these guys here. If you have already have a bunch of servo wires like this, you can also just take them out of here like that. For the powering the, the Mini Ammo SD, again, you should already have a way of powering it because this is just uh, showing you how to update the OSD. So you, it should already be powered. But if not, you can just find one of these cables like this or whatever. And uh, this is just for a temporary thing or whatever. Just swap the red and the black around and take out the uh, white wire or orange wire. But I'm gonna just going to be using two wires like this to power it. So your TX and your RX is needed here. So the RX here would be connected to the green wire on this guy here. It's all right that you get the RX and TX backwards. You just won't get no readings. It's just important you don't get the uh, five volts and ground backwards, that's all. That's pretty frayed here. Okay. So on the APM side, you have your TX and your RX. Just make sure they don't short out on anything. They're just not needed right now. We're really just after the power. And then we want to power the mini MOSD. So I'm just going to find five volts in the middle rail on this side and then the ground. And I'm going to plug in the five volts here. Just confirm underneath your board 
where it says ground 5 volt RX TX and then plug in your ground. BLK I think we found out too that it's actually ground as well so you can put this here or there but just use the ground anyways. All right so make sure these are connected properly and uh, you have to be able to get to this reset button for the next step. All right so this guy here make sure it's plugged into your computer And I'm just going to plug in the APM for power. So the light on this guy should come on and the light on your Mini M OSD should come on. So open up my package folder and go into the config OSD 20 and then double click on the OSD config. All right, go to uh, panel one. And here's all the things you can change. So the trick here is hold down the button here, the reset button. Just hold it down like that and then click read from OSD. Once you've clicked on it, let go of the um, reset button. So if you get failed to talk to bootloader, you might have to turn the TX and the RX around. So I'll try it again just to make sure. Yeah, I'm a little. Okay, so I have the TX and RX backwards. Like I said, there should be no harm done. So you can just unplug the RX, TX, and swap them around. If I can get it back in there. Now hold the reset button down, and then click read from OSD and let go of it. So if it says down, done downloading data, everything's perfect. Right, so in here now, this is what you can change. All these things you can uncheck, the things you don't want. So I'm just gonna leave a couple of things here. I want my battery, I want uh, maybe the GF GPS lock and GPS coordinates. Actually, I'm not really too concerned where it is like that. I don't care about this stuff. Home direction, doesn't really bug me either. Altitude, I should know how high it is because I can see it. So I'm just gonna put the very basics, is the battery and the current. Maybe the flight mode. All right, so now, what's this guy? Don't know, get rid of him. And where's my, there should be one with satellites. Oh, visible sats, I want that definitely. Maybe put the lock. So this is kind of a neat thing here is, this is for the battery percentage. So you can move everything where you want it. To show. So just gonna move this guys over here. That's pretty messy, actually. The lock there. All right, so to update it now, just hold down the reset button again. Let's plug this guy back in. I plugged it for a second. All right, to update it again, now the same process, hold down the reset button and then click save current tab the OSD and then let go of the reset button. And it should, you might have to try it a couple of times. So it worked. So now what you can do is just move something around. Something else might pop up here when it's red, but don't worry about it, it probably won't show up. So I'm just gonna hold the reset button down, click read from OSD, let go. And then that should pop back up there again. All right, so that's how easy it is to update it like that. So I'll just show you guys on the OSD quickly. So I'll unplug this guy. i bring the OSD back over this way. So I'm just gonna remove. Uh, how am I gonna do this? Yeah, I'm just gonna remove the telemetry for now. And 
and I'm just going to hook this guy, I believe, oh, the way I have it now. So I might have these guys backwards again. I always forget what's what. All right. So really, we're not using this right now. If you want to, you just only hook up the um, RX. But again, you guys should already know that. And I'm just gonna hook up my video. The bottom pin corner here, and then my ground on the other one. And I just have a cheap thing. I actually directly soldered onto an end like this for the display here. Just for this video. PM to power everything. So if you get nothing, obviously I have that backwards again. All right, so that's how clean the screen is now, just like we did it in the software. All right guys, so I just wanted to show you how easy it was. Um, don't power everything off your APM like I did in this video. This is just a crude way of me getting everything working quickly. You'll most likely brown out your APM if you're up in the air, if you have too many things plugged into it. And uh, yeah, anyways, I hope this helps some, somebody out at least. Uh, like and subscribe, and that's all. Thanks guys, bye.